So yesterday we talked about binary compounds, and those were really ionic compounds. We were looking at different ions. Um, molecular compounds are going to be when you have a nonmetal, like two nonmetals bonded together, or a nonmetal and metalloid, and a metalloid bonded together. And if you look on the ion chart, they would both be negatively charged ions. You'd have two anions bonded together, and that would make that a molecular compound because they're going to look very similar in their chemical formula, but you need to be able to recognize that as a molecular, molecular compound because there's a different, totally different way of naming them when they're molecular. Um, so the element further left on the periodic table is always listed first, or the element clo closest to the bottom is listed first. And if more than one compound can be formed from the same elements, we use prefixes to indicate the number of each atom. So whenever we have a molecular formula, we're going to be using prefixes. And then the last element always ends in IDE ending. So our prefixes, we use the Greek prefixes. What do you think the prefix for one would be? Mono. What would two be? Di. Three. Tri. Four. Tetra. Tetra. Yes. Um, one way to remember that, Tetris, you know the game? Always four blocks. Mm -hmm. All of them have four blocks, yep. Tetris. Tetra. Um, four, five. Penta. And then six. Hexa. Seven. Hepta. Hepta. Nine. Octa, not, or eight, sorry, I skipped eight. Eight is octa. Nine, nana, and then ten, deca. You need to know those. I should say them all again, or I could do that. <laughs> now, we, so we use the Greek prefixes. There's also Latin prefixes and the other prefixes that you're used to, but we use the Greek prefixes for these. Um, we do not have to put the prefix mono in front of the first element. So as long as there's only one, you don't need to put a prefix in front of the first element. Uh, but the second element should always have a prefix. So for this one, if you look up nitrogen and fluorine, nitrogen is negative 3 and fluorine is negative 1. So now you know that it's a molecular compound and you need to use prefixes. So you would say... There's only one nitrogen, so instead of saying mononitrogen, you can just write nitrogen for the first element. And then um, how many fluorides are there? There are three, so use the prefix tri, and so it would be trifluoride. You don't have to do anything with balancing out charges, because can you balance out a charge if they're both negative? No. So you can't, so you're going to use the prefixes. Um, so SO2 would be sulfur dioxide. Now one thing also, the O or A gets dropped off of these prefixes if the, uh, if the element ends or begins with a vowel. If there's a few with iodine that will keep the A. But oxygen, like if you have oxygen, you would drop the O or A. So instead of monooxygen, it's just, or monooxide, it'd be minoxide. And then this example, there's two nitrogens, and since there's more than one, we do need to include the prefix for the first element, so it's dinitrogen. The prefix for the first element, or the element's name for the first element does not get changed to the IDE ending. And then the second element, chloride, there's four of them, so it's tetrachloride. So the first, when you have a compound and you're trying to determine how to name it, you want to look and see if it's an ionic compound, that means it has a cation and an anion. 
If it has both anions and is a molecular compound, and the naming system you use is prefixes, um, if it's ionic and the cation only has one charge, then you name the metal first and then change it to IDE ending. If a cation has more than one charge, make sure that you use the Roman numerals in parentheses. That's what that chart is telling us. So how would we name these? What would the names of these compounds be? Just a second. My Sulfur trioxide. So why would you say sulfide? Sulfide? Or ite? Sulfite has a 2 minus charge. There's no charge there. So you know it has to be a molecular compound. Yep. Okay, the second one? Dinitrogen. This is where you're going to drop the A and it says tetroxide, not tetraoxide. It's tetroxide. Uh, CO. Carbon monoxide. NO2. And N2O. And nitrogen monoxide. The second element always needs a prefix. So really naming the molecular compounds are a lot easier, probably, because you don't have to cross over charges and you don't have to worry about balancing charges. Um, you don't have to worry about making sure you have Roman numerals. The hardest part for these are, is making sure, well, determining whether or not it is a molecular compound. Just always make sure you check your char charges. All of these are negatively charged ions. They're anions, and so they are all molecular compounds. Okay, what about the formulas for these molecular compounds? Carbon disulfide would be... Right, just CS2. It's telling us we have two sulfurs. That's all we have to do. We don't have to move the two over or anything. How about disilicon hexabromide? Yep. Now, for molecular compounds, we don't want to reduce this down to SIBr3. The ionic compounds, we'd want to reduce it down, but this we don't. Okay, next one. SF4, good. And the last one? O5, very good. Okay. Now, last, last part we have, well, we have acids and bases and then hydrates. The last two things we have to learn how to name. And acids, um, well, a compound is, is an acid if its cation is hydrogen. So if hydrogen is the first element in the compound, or if you look at the cation and it's hydrogen, it is an acid. And when you name an acid, the, the anion name needs to change. We're going to change the ending. So anions with IDE, so like if it's just HCl, that would be hydrogen chloride. But since it's an acid, we're going to change the IDE to a hydro prefix, and then we're going to change IDE.
E to IC. So instead of saying hydrogen chloride, the name of that acid would be hydrochloric acid. We add hydro, and then chloric, we change the IDE to IC, and then it's an acid, so hydrochloric acid. Um, oxoacids are basically any of the acids where the anion is the polyatomic ion, because all those polyatomic ions, most of them have oxygen in them. Uh, so here's an example of one of those acids, that's carbonic acid. And I think the next slide we should have the rules for that. Yes. So if you notice, look at your ion chart and find chloride. Or not chloride, chlorate. Find chlorate. CLO3, negative. So what would the difference between chlorate and chlorite be? One less oxygen. So as we go from chlorate to chlorite, we're losing an oxygen. So what would hypochlorite be, you think? CLO. Right, you subtract another oxygen, so it's just CLO. If you find hypochlorite on your chart, it is CLO with a minus one charge. The charge doesn't change, it's the number of oxygens. What about if you go from eight to like a chlorate to perchlorate, what do you think you do? Add one, you add an oxygen. So that's ClO4 minus one charge. So all of these, and that would follow the same pattern for any of the ions. Sulfate is SO4, sulfite is SO3. Okay? But if you notice, sulfate has four oxygens, chlorate only has three oxygens. So each um, element has its own like the sulfate may be different, but the trend from going to the sulfate to sulfite um, would always be the same. And to change the name of the polyatomic ion into the acid name, whenever you see an ATE ending, you need to change it to IC. We leave the prefix per here. We don't change that because it's in the polyatomic ion name already. Um, and then the ITE ending here changes to an OUS ending. So if we had the chlorate ion, and we wanted, so if chlorate is Cl, ClO3 minus 1. To make the acid, we'd need a hydrogen cation and a ClO3 minus 1. So that would be HClO3. Three. And that name would be uh, chloric, just chloric acid. Different from hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid would be just HCl. Chloric acid is HClO3. If we wanted perchloric acid, it would be HClO4. Um, our chlorous acid would be HClO2. And hypochlorous acid would be HClO. You kind of see the trend there with the oxygens? Because there may be some that maybe is not on your chart, on your table, but you should be able to find one of the representative ions, like an ATE. Maybe the question is asking for an ITE, and you should be able to figure out how many oxygens are on that ion based on just subtracting and adding oxygens. Yes. So we'll go through lots of examples here. Bases are a lot simpler where anytime you have an OH group, a hydroxide, that just means it's a base, but you name it the same. You don't have to change anything, and you would just have the cation with the hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide. When you look up OH, it's the hydroxide. You wouldn't do anything different. And then hydrates, um, when they solidify, they have kind of secured water inside their crystal structure. And so they have a specific number of water molecules attached. And you name these hydrates, the, the compound, like lithium chloride, would be the same. But you're going to see a times 2H2O or times 6H2O. You're going to see how many water molecules are attached 
And that's where you're going to use the Greek prefixes followed by hydrate to show how many water molecules are attached. So this is barium chloride, same way we would name it like we did yesterday. But we have two waters, so it's dihydrate. We just add that part to the end. OK, let's go through these problems. So H3PO4, just by looking at that, what can you tell me about that compound? Has two water molecules? If it had water molecules, it would look like this down here. Okay, hydrogen is our cation, so what does that make that? It's an acid. So right away you should be able to tell it's an acid. Um, so we need to look up PO4. What is PO4? Okay, so it's phosphate. And when we name acids, the ATE ending changes to what? Right, we need to change it to an IC. So we would have... And now phos phosphate actually is a little different where it, instead of just dropping the AT and IC, it actually adds an OR in there. Phosphoric just sounds better. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> but instead it's phosphic. It's phosphoric. Yeah. yeah. Only if it's, right, if it's two hydrogen and one other element. Yes. Correct. The hydro. When we get down to this one, though, we will. Okay. Um, this one, again, hydrogen is a cation, so it's an acid. So look up BRO3. Bromate. So what would the name of this acid be? Yep. Bromic acid. Change the ATE to an IC ending, and it would just be bromic acid. Okay, HI. We do have, uh, it's an acid again. Now, this is the one where we have only two elements. We have hydrogen and one other element. So, what prefix did we have to add? Hydro. So we have to have hydro. Iodic acid. Because it's iodide, so we take off IDE and put IC. Hydroiodic acid. How about H2SO4? Question. Yes. Nope. It's just telling you it's an acid. Now, why is there three and only one here? Right. Phosphate's a three minus charge, whereas bromate's a minus one charge. The hydro part? Right. These have three elements, three elements. This only has two elements. Okay, right, what'd you get? Uh huh. Now, this is another one. This is actually sulfate. SO4 is sulfate. They add a UR here. Makes it roll off your tongue better. I don't know. <laughs> Sulfuric. Why are you doing with the O? With the O. The SO4, this whole thing is sulfate. Right. This whole thing is bromate. Yep. Okay, is the next one an acid? No. No. Because this is our cation, so it is we have OH as our as our anion, so it is a base. And what would it be? Yep. Potassium hydroxide. You name it the same way you would 
with the with the ones we did yesterday. How about the second one or this one? I guess not. Just barium hydroxide. The only time we use the prefixes is when they were both anions. This is a cation and an anion, so we don't use prefixes. Uh, barium chloride dihydrate. <coughs> okay, what would this one be? We named this normally. So it's the name of LICL. Lithium chloride. And now we have to tell us how many water molecules are there? One. So what's the prefix? Monohydrate. So lithium chloride monohydrate. How about this one? Magnesium sulfate. No, hepta. Hepta hydrate. Questions on those? When do I change the ending? If it's an acid. And the acids have to have... Right. Um, if it's two anions, then you use prefixes. If it's a cation anion, you do not use prefixes. If hydrogen is your cation, then that's when it's an acid and you're going to have to change the endings. Um, I think the next slide probably has where we have to write the actual compound, the formula. So hydrofluoric acid. Right away you know it's an acid, so what has to be our cation? And it's a plus one. And hydro means it's only hydrogen and the other element, and the other element must be fluorine. So we have F. So minus one, so our formula would be HF, yes. They're both minus one, plus one. How about carbonic acid? We have H, it has to be our cation. What do we need to look for? Are we looking for carbon? Right, but which, is it, is it just H and carbon? If it was just hydrogen and carbon, it would be have a hydro prefix, right? So we need to look for carb carbon eight. So since it's an eight um, IC ending, that means it was from an ATE ending. So we need to look for carbonate. So look up carbonate, and it's and so what would our formula be? H two. CO3. We still need to balance the charges. Does that make sense how we go? So you know that it's an acid, so we have H plus, right? So now we have to determine is it just one element or a polyatomic ion? Since there's no hydro, then we know it's a polyatomic ion, and the IC ending always comes from an ATE ending. So you look for, yep, you'd look for carbon 8. So when you look up carbon 8, it's, it's CO3 2 minus. Right, and remember OUS came from which ending? ITE. So on this next one, nitrous acid, it's an acid, so we know it's H+. Plus. Is it a, 
Uh, it doesn't have hydro on it, so it's not just nitrogen. We have to look up OUS means it was ITE, so we need to look up nitrite. And O2 with a minus 1, so our formula would be HNO2. So even though we're having a quiz on, what day was it, Thursday? Thursday on the ions, when we have our quiz over the nomenclature stuff on Friday, you'll be able to use your ion chart. Or I'll have a copy for you to use, actually. Ide? Right, Ide changes to ick also. So it could also come from IDE, but if it came from an IDE, you'd have hydro in front of it too. Okay, permanganic acid, we have hydrogen, and then MnO4, permanganate, minus one or minus two? Minus one. Right, no hydro, so we know it's not just manganese. So we look up permanganate. Permanganate on your chart is MnO4 with a minus one charge. So our formula would just be H, since they're both plus one, minus one, HMNO4. That looks like the last acid one. Do you guys want to do more acid examples? Okay. How about calcium hydroxide? It has a two plus. CA, right, and make sure you have parentheses there. Last one. We just said CA is 2 plus. What's nitrite? Um, NO2 minus 1. So what would our formula be? NO2, parentheses, 2. Okay, and now we have the times 5 water, H2O. Okay, very good.